Welcome to the University uh, Theo San Pablo. It's a great pleasure to have all you here. As you know, this is part of our project on um, this topic, uh, which is certainly very timely <clears throat> in the moments that uh, we, uh, historical moments that we have today in Europe. It is a project that the University San Paulo Seo is conducting together with a number of institutions, with the Universidad de Nova de Lisboa, with uh, Notre Europe, uh, with the University from um, uh, Warsaw and Instituto and Escuela Superior Santa, Santana in Pisa. All the representatives from these institutions, I am particularly grateful for their participation. It is an ongoing project uh, f that we uh, got from the Commission for three years. Uh, this is one of the first events that we are organizing. As you know, our intention is also to be able to publish uh, along <coughs> as we proceed with the uh, project, the uh, proceeds and the results of the research which is going to be conducted. Uh, today and tomorrow, we are going to um, uh, deepen into some of the issues, and as you can see from the program, it is extensive, but at the same time, it takes care of different relevant uh, elements of the general topic of solidarity in hard times. Uh, we are going to uh, have a panel on solidarity and EU identity, so starting from the more general uh, perspectives, then solidarity and economic integration, uh, cohesion policies, national experiences, solidarity and free movement of persons, social dialogue in the internal market, a new European budget for a better solidarity, and then a final <coughs> roundtable with uh, policy makers on future challenges uh, to solidarity in the European Union. We are going to uh, have, uh, as you can see, a participation which is very international from different uh, countries. We have tried to be as uh, open in the dialogue uh, as possible. And it is a great pleasure for me to introduce, first of all, as a keynote speaker and introduction <coughs> to, the, uh, today, uh, to today's session, Mr. Marcelino Oreja Aguirre, who is the president of the Institute of European Studies, and as you know, a uh, public personality who has had probably all the uh, responsibilities that you can have uh, at the European level uh, and at the national level, really, because as you know, uh, Mr. Marcelino Oreja was a commissioner, was secretary general of the Council of Europe, uh, minister of foreign affairs in Spain, a professor at this university and president of the institute, so it's a great pleasure uh, to have uh, Martino Oreja as the driving force of the institute and to have him today uh, giving this uh, introductory speech to the, uh, to the conference. Thank you very much again for being here with us. I hope that you enjoy your stay in Madrid. Uh, we want to have a very productive uh, two days and uh, be able to start and to continue with the project. Um, and we will, you know, talking to you and seeing how can we then improve also different elements of it. Well, first of all, I would like to welcome you all and congratulate the organizers and participants of this meeting for devoting time and effort to a very relevant issue, that is solidarity in the European Union. In my opinion, after years working in different European institutions, uh, my idea is that the European Union has two main responsibilities. One ad intra, concerning its internal dimension, and another ad extra regarding the universal international community. In relation to the latter, the main responsibility of the Union is the approval of concrete measures which can effectively achieve the goals mentioned in Article 3.5 of the Treaty that states 
it's a very interesting, you know it very well, very important article. In his relations with the wider world, the Union shall uphold and promote its values and interests and contribute to the protection of its citizens. It shall contribute to peace, security, the sustainable development of the earth, solidarity and mutual respect among peoples, free and fair trade, eradication of poverty and the, and the protection of human rights, in particular the rights of the child, as well as the strict observance and development of international law, including respect to the principles of United Nations Charter. I think it's, it's a remarkable text which recalls important goals whose achievement may require sacrifices and deep changes in our development model and the habits of our society. At Intra, the Union, on the basis of the Charter of Fundamental Rights, must strongly support the European social model, particularly in times of crisis and when the welfare state is often called into question. The Charter is a balanced legal text that reproduces rights which were already recognized by the case law of the European Court of Justice and by many other legal instruments and constitutes the European uh, acquis communautaire on human rights. How difficult it's to translate acquis communautaire in other languages. I wouldn't know in Spanish how to say acervo comunitario. comunitario, but acquis communautaire, I think it's a very good word on human rights. The Charter, we know very well, was not born in Nilo, ex Nilo. In its preamble, we find a link with national constitutional traditions, with case law of uh, European Court of Justice on the protection of human rights and fundamental freedoms, and other international human rights treaties with binding effect on member states. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, the Charter contains important and ambitious innovations, and very especially, I would like to underline the fact that it is the text that unites all individual rights, civil, political, economic, and social rights. It breaks, in a way, with the usual distinction of other universal and European texts between civil and political rights on one hand and economic and social rights on the other. As the case law of the European Court on Human Rights shows, since 1979 all rights recognized by the European Convention on Human Rights are effective and concrete and not elusive or just theoretical. But it is good to remind that the traditional principles of social policy, which are at the core of the cohesion of our societies and of the legitimacy of our political system, are nowadays often challenged and called into question. A confrontation that goes beyond the usual conflict of interests because there is a general confusion that might block our societies in a, in a kind of, of labyrinth of acquired rights, uh, bureaucratic regulations, groups of interests, and electoral expectations. The ultraliberal temptations to put an end to the welfare state, encouraged by extreme partisans of the market and of a progressive weakening of the state, that is to say, those enthusiastic of the formula, the less state intervention, all the better, argue that the European Union should refrain from acting on a field which is already so complex at national level. For partisans of this position, 
There is no doubt that the economic and social situation in the 28 member states is too unequal, and both their traditions and cultures concerning the relationship between the state and social actors are too different, so that, in their opinion, harmonized regulation of unemployment subsidies, social security, and pensions would worsen an already uh, disrupted scenario. Therefore, they say, wouldn't it be better to let member states manage so sensitive issues and wait to see which will be the market influence on the evolution of social inequalities? Is it not theoretical, they argue, and unrealistic to propose the goal of full employment? Wouldn't it have been better to use a more modest, more reasonable language? In my opinion, on the contrary, the social model is a crucial element of the European identity, in which, in spite of the political and financial obstacles, Solidarity is essential. As Jacques Delors, who was my boss in the Commission for years, used to say, and always he used to come practically in our, every session, he said, don't forget the three pillars of integration are competition, cooperation, and solidarity. I've heard him hundreds of times saying that. The main political difficulty lies precisely on how to define solidarity in a historical context, where the current reality obliges to question if the traditional version of the European social model is not exhausted. My belief is that it is very positive that the social model has been defined in the treaty. The consequence is the regulation of the role of social actors and the tripartite social summit, and above all, the horizontal clauses by which all the Union's action must pursue the goals of equality, high level of employment, social protection, first against social exclusion, high level of education and training and protection of the environment, consumers and services of general economic interest. Nevertheless, it's also clear that the maintenance of the unanimity rule and the continuous references to the subsidiarity principle in order to take into consideration the diversity of national conditions makes difficult to advance on the redefinition of a social Europe, even if social policy has become a shared competence and not just a complementary one. According to my personal perspective, all this is not only due to the impact of enlargement, but above all to what some call modernization of the social model, a trend that is structured along three axes. Competition, which in their opinion determines the scope of social protection. The recovery of the market as a space where solidarity should operate. And lastly, the subordination of social policy to the requirements of the market and competition. These three axes are extremely dangerous and operate as an irresistible force and lead to reduction on the market corrective character of solidarity. That's what explains the somehow ambitious, ambiguous formula ambiguous formula that appears in Article 3 of the Treaty to define the goals of the Union. The Union shall work for the sustainable development of Europe based on balanced economic growth and price stability, a highly competitive social market economy aiming at full employment and social progress and a high level of protection and improvement of the quality of environment. In any case, I must recognize that the same provision adds that the Union shall combat social exclusion and discrimination and promote social justice and protection, equality between women and men 
and solidarity between generations. In conclusion, it is important to stress that thanks to the Treaty of the European Union and in spite of its flaws, we have a guidance to answer those who ignore what a social Europe means and the role the social dimension has to play in Europe. Because the social model of the Union is a key element for the European identity. We often speak and hear saying European identity. What means European identity? I was asked before beginning now say a few words about what was my idea. Well, I think we should insist very much on the idea of solidarity. In spite of the political and financial obstacles, solidarity is essential. Essential because even if the market has been a crucial element of the integration process, it is indispensable to impede that the union becomes an instrument of the market. We must never forget that the European Union is, above all, a union of shared values that is recalled in the treaties and in the Charter of Fundamental Rights. And the citizens expect that the governments vote for justice, protection, and respect of the rule of law. Let me end congratulating the organizers for the choice of such an important topic as the core of your meeting. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.